All right. I guess I should also mention mute your phones. I should do that to myself here. All right. And um, don't worry if you mess up or miss a line or get lost, like it's not a big deal. Just roll with it. No, don't, don't freak out. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just having fun. Everybody good with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. All right. Act one, scene one of the Scottish play Macbeth by William Shakespeare, enacted by friends in um, the areas around Kennesaw and Ackworth in Marietta. And um, maybe at the end, we'll do a curtain call and everyone can identify themselves, but we'll go ahead and start here. All right, act one, scene one, a desert place, thunder and lightning, enter three witches. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That would be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Fair is there foul, is foul thou and thou is fair. Hover over the roof of fog and fill the air. air. Exit. Okay, Act One, Scene Two: A Camp Near Forest. This scene will have Duncan, Malcolm, Donalbane, Lennox. We'll be joined by the Sergeant Ross. And that's it. So everyone but those people should go ahead and mute. Enter Duncan, Malcolm, Donald Bain, and Lennox. A wounded sergeant enters from the opposite side. Lennox runs to assist him. What bloody man is that? This is the sergeant. King to say to the king, the knowledge of the bio and no didn't leave it. Doubtful is stood, the merciless Mechtenwald, worthy of the of worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him from the western eyes. E from the Western Isles is supplied, and fortune on a stupid quarrel, smiling, showed be, showed be a rebel's war, but all's too weak for the brave Macbeth, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave and unseamed him from knave from the knave to be chaps. Whoa, valiant cousin. Mark, king of Scotland. Mark, no sooner justice had the valor, with valor armed compelled, these skipping kerns to trust their heels, but the Norway, Norwayan lord surveying van, vintage, uh, vantage began a fresh assault. Just made not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes, as, spar as sparrows eagles, or hare the lion. If I say soothe, I must report they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they've doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. But I am faint, my gashes cry for help. Go oh, get him, surgeons. Lennox leads the sergeant out. Enter Ross, who kneels before the king. God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwegian banners flop the sky and fan our people pull. Norway himself, with the most disloyal traitor, thane of Calder, began a dismal conflict, told that Bologna's bygroom confronted him. Point against point, rebellious, arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit. And to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! No more the Thane of Cardor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet Macbeth. Oh, see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. 
exit. All right. Does everybody understand what just happened? Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody tell me real quick what happened. There was a great battle. Mm -hmm. Macbeth and Duncan wasn't there. Duncan was chilling somewhere else. Yep. But Macbeth and Banquo did very well. And so Macbeth was awarded a new title. Yeah. In of Thane of Cador. Thane of Cador, right. Cador. All right, good job. We're going to go to scene three, a heath near forest. And in this scene, we've got the witches. And we're also going to be joined by Macbeth and Banquo. And I think, oh, then later there will be Ross and Angus. And then finally, we'll also get Duncan, Malcolm, Donald Bain, and Lennox. So all you folks should be unmuted. So I'm not so should I be muted or not? You can unmute yourself later if you want to, but you are going to eventually be in the scene. It's up to you. Okay, scene three, a heath near forest. Thunder, enter the three witches. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. Sister, where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I, a right thee, witch, the rump-fed Ronyon cries. The witches gasp. They're all insulted by this treatment and decide to punish the woman. Her husband's to Aleppo gone master of the tiger. In a sieve I'll thither sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. I'll give thee a wind. And I another. I myself have all the other. Sleep shall neither night nor day hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man forbid. Though his bark cannot be lost, yet it shall be tempest tossed. Third witch offers the thumb of a sailor to finish the spell. Here I have a pilot's thumb, wrecked as homeward he did come. He places the thumb on the ground. They join hands in a circle around it and chant. The weird, weird sisters, sisters, hand in hand, hand. Posters, posters of, of the sea and land, land. thus do go about, about, about. thrice is thine, and thrice is mine, and thrice, 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 thrice again to make up the nine. Peace, the charms wound up. The witches retreat to the back of the stage out of the main light. Enter Macbeth and Banquo. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. The witches step forward and show themselves. Macbeth and Banquo are so startled they almost draw their swords. What are these so withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet aren't? Speak if you can. Who are you? Witches make a prophecy. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. If you can look into the seeds of time, speak them to me. Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Thou as if to kings. I know I am them of Glamis, but how of Caldor? Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence. Heckling, the witches step backwards out of the light. Macbeth and Banquo are again shocked because to them it is as if the witches turn invisible. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. And what seemed corporal melted his breath into the wind. I personally think it's a joke. Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. 
a stain of color or two. When did not so? <laughs> they laughed. Enter Ross and Angus. Who's there? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks. He bade me from him call thee Thane of Caldor. <gasps> the Thane of Caldor lives. Why did you dress me in borrowed robes? Under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Treasonous capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. Beth pulls Banquo aside. What can the devil speak true? Do not hope your children shall be kings? Tis strange. Oftentimes, to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Banquo goes to Ross and Angus and speaks silently with them. Macbeth wanders to the front of the stage to speak and aside. Cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success? Good, what if I yield to that thing's destined, whose horrid image doth unfix my hair? If chance will have me king, why chance they crown me without my steer? Enter Duncan, Malcolm, Donalbane, Lennox, Ross, Angus, Macbeth, and Banquo bow to the king. O oh, worthiest cousin, more is thy due than more all that all we can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe, in doing it pays itself. Noble Banquo, that hast no less deserved. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. Duncan clasps Banquo on the shoulder, then turns to address all the lords. Sons, kinsmen, thanes. No, we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. The king and the lord slowly exit, leaving Macbeth alone on stage as he speaks. Prince of Cumberland? That's a step on which I must fall down, or else or leap. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my back, black and deep desire. All right. Great job, everybody. Exit scene four, Inverness, Macbeth's castle. This scene is going to have uh, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth only. So everybody else go ahead and mute. Enter Lady Macbeth, reading a letter. Glamis thou art and Cador, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature, it is too full, O oh, the milk of human kindness, to catch the nearest way. Enter a messenger. What is your tidings? Lady, the king comes here tonight. Messenger bows and exits. The raven himself is horse that croaks, the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here. Fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold. Hold. Enter Macbeth. Great Glamis, worthy Cador, greater than both by the all hell hereafter. Oh. All right, I'm unmuting you. Macbeth, that's you, dude. What? I just said my arm. I think uh, you were muted. Yeah, you were muted. Okay, go ahead and say it again. It's all right. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. 
to beguile the time, look like the time, bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. We will speak further. Exit together. Okay. Scene five is at Macbeth's castle. We've got a lot of people here. Duncan, Malcolm, Donald Bain, Banquo, Lennox, Macduff, Ross, Angus, Lady Macbeth, and let's see, that's gonna be it for this scene. Everybody ready? Here we go. Enter Duncan, Malcolm, Donald Bain, Banquo, Lennox, Macduff, Ross, Angus from one side, Lady Macbeth from the other. <clears throat> This castle has a pleasant seat. Our honored hostess, where is the Thane of Cardor? Lady Macbeth leads them off stage to one side while Macbeth comes on behind them and watches them go. He struggles with his conscience. He is here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself, reduce. Or to prick the sides of my intent would only result in ambition. Lady Macbeth re enters. We will proceed no further in this business. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act as thou art in desire? Prithee, peace. I do, or do all that may become a man who dares. To do more is not. When you durst do it, then you were a man. I have given suck and know how tender tis to love the baby that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail, but screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains, will I with wine and wassail, so convince that memory shall be a fume. What then cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Bring forth men, children only. For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two and used their very daggers that they have done? Who dares receive it other? I am set away and mock the time with fair show. False face must hide what false heart doth know. Lady Macbeth nods and walks off stage, smiling. Macbeth looks out above the audience and seems to see something hovering there. Is this a dagger I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not, little vision? Sensible to feeling as to sight, or art thou but a dagger of the mind, proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? And on thy blade and dug in gouts of blood is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. A bell rings off stage. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Or to hell. Exit. All right. Fantastic, guys. Good job. We're going to go on to Act Two. This scene is just Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. Okay. Act One, Act Two, Scene One Court of Macbeth's Castle. Enter Lady Macbeth. He is about it, the doors are open, and the grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets. Who's there? 
Alack, I am afraid they have awaked, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. Enter Macbeth with bloody hands, carrying in his left hand two bloody daggers. He holds these low at his side, so Lady Macbeth cannot see them yet. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear an oath? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Macbeth raises his right hand and looks upon the blood. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did in sleep and one great murder. And I, God bless us and amen the other. I cannot say amen. Wherefore can I not pronounce a and then? I was much in need of blessing. Consider it not so deeply. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. Macbeth stops sleep no more. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. She takes his hands to lead him away and then sees the bloody daggers. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Well, go no more. Infirm of purpose. She snatches the daggers from him and runs out the way Macbeth has come in. A loud knock off stage. Macbeth is badly startled. Whence is that knocking? Oh, will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? Lady Macbeth re-enters without the daggers, but with her hands also covered in blood, she shows them to Macbeth. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. Another knock. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. She takes Macbeth's hand and drags him off. Macbeth shouts as he leaves. <laughs> One more line, Val. Wake Duncan with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. Exit. Okay, this scene is going to uh, kind of run into this next one, scene two. Same setting. We're going to include the porter, Macduff and uh, Macbeth and Lennox and Lady, Ma Lady Macbeth, Banquo, Donald Bain, um, and Malcolm are all gonna come in by the end, okay? So everybody get your mics on. All right, we're scene two, the same, knocking, enter a porter. Knock, 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 who's there? Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? I, uh, the name of Beelzebub. <laughs> Beelzebub. Beelzebub. <laughs> Here's a farmer who that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Knock, knock. Who's there? In the other devil's name. He's an equivocator who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate, equivocate to heaven. Knock, knock, never quite. Goes to the side of the stage and mimes opening a door. Macduff and Lennox enter from that place. Is it so late, friend? How you went to bed like you do lie so late? Thanks, sir. You were carousing. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Nose painting, sleep, and urine. Porter laughs loudly, <laughs> rolls his eyes, and looks at the patient. Is my master stirring? Thy knocking has awaked him. The porter shuffles off the way Macduff and Lennox entered. 
and Macbeth comes in from the opposite side, his hands clean. Good morrow, both. Wait. Uh, is it my turn? No. no. This case, I, what are they fine? Uh, really? I'll yeah. bring you to him. Macbeth escorts Macduff to the opposite side of the stage where Macbeth entered and shows him out as if through a door. Macbeth remains on stage with Lennox. Hey, Valor. We're both on stage together. Okay. Okay. The night has been. Un, un, I get to pronounce it. Unruly. Unruly. The, where we lay. Our chimneys were blown down and lay matings heard I the air strange screams of death. It was a rough night. Duff comes running back in, cringing with horror. Oh, horror! What's the matter? Oh, sacrilegious water! Got broke up in the hole of the Norton Temple! Mean, mean you his majesty? Macbeth sneaks off stage towards Duncan's room as Macduff raises the alarm. Awake, awake, ring the alarm bell! Murder on treason! Enter Banquo and Lady Macbeth running at the alarm. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, a royal master's martyred! What? In our house? Too cruel anywhere. Macduff shares a quick, silent word with Lennox, explaining what he saw. Enter Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons. Macbeth also walks quietly back on, unseen. What is amiss? Your royal father is murdered! Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had dozen to the hands and faces to it were bagged with blood, so that so were the daggers. Oh, yet do I repent me of my fury, but I didn't kill <laughs> Wherefore did you so? Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. There the murderers steeped in the colours of their trade. Who could refrain this had a heart to love? Lady Macbeth starts to become nervous that Macbeth might give it away and fakes to fainting. Help me, Hansel! Faints. Not to the light be. Everyone runs to help Lady Macbeth except for Malcolm and Donalbane. I'm gone. Most fake friends, argument is ours. Let's away. All to England. Oh, I lost Amanda. It froze. What do we do? All right, I'm just going to do her last line. Donald Bain says, to Ireland, I. The rest carry Lady Macbeth. To Ireland, out. I. Oh, there it there goes. <laughs> the rest carry Lady Macbeth out one way. Malcolm and Donald Bain leave by the opposite. All right. Act three. Scene one. Um, in this scene, we're going to have Banquo and Macbeth, and then we're going to bring in the first and second murderers and Lady Macbeth. Okay, is everybody set? Scene, act three, scene one, forest, the palace, enter Banquo. Thou hast it now, as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playedest the most foully for it. Yet it was said that myself should be the root and father of many kings. Macbeth walks in seemingly very cheerful with Duncan's crown on his head. He is now king. Who is our chief guest? Ride you this afternoon? Aye, my lord. We should have else desired your good advice. They'll not our feast. My lord, I will not. Exit Banquo. He still seems suspicious of Macbeth, and Macbeth smiles a little too much. When Banquo is gone, Macbeth lets his frustration show. Thus is nothing but to be safely thus. They hailed him father to a line of kings. 
on my head, they placed a fruitless crown. Enter the first two murderers. All of you know Bank Guo was your enemy. So is he mine. I will put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off. We shall perform that. I will advise you where to plant yourself, for it must be done tonight. Liance's son must also embrace the faith of that dog. We are resolved, my lord. The murderers creep off. Lady Macbeth enters from the opposite side. Lady Macbeth has grown worried since Macbeth seems to be keeping his plans to himself lately. Now, my lord, why do you keep alone? What's done is done. You've scorched the snake, not killed it. Gentle, my lord, be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowst the Banquo in his filiance lives. And what's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. They exit together to go to the feast. Lady Macbeth looking worried. Okay, scene two, park near the palace. We're gonna need all the murderers, one, two, and three, and Banquo. All right, here we go. Enter all three murderers. They crouch down and hide near the back of the stage. Look, I hear horses. Give us the light. Ho! Oh. Is he? Enter Banquo and Fleance with a torch. It will be rain tonight. The three murderers jump out of hiding and attack Banquo. <laughs> Let it come down. Oh, treachery! Fly, good Fleance! Fly! Fans run back ah! while Banquo holds the three murderers at bay. They surround him and kill him. There's but one down. The sun is fled. We have lost the best half of our affair. Exit. All right. Scene three. <laughs> We're, um, going to be having a big party here. There should be lots of characters. We're going to have Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Ross, Lennox, Angus, the first murderer, and we will also have Banquo's ghost show up, and I think that's it. All right, scene three, a hall of the palace. Enter Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Ross, Lennox, and Angus. Enlarge in mirth, anon will drink a measure the table round. Lady Macbeth leads the guests to their places where they sit in preparation for a feast. One place in the center is left empty for Macbeth. They talk silently while Macbeth heads to the side of the stage farthest from the guests. The first murderer enters to meet him and they talk quietly. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. <laughs> Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he's good that did like the like for three fiats. My royal sir, Clance is escaped. I have now been perfect. Now I am cabin to saucy dancing here. The lords have noticed Macbeth's absence. Lady Macbeth approaches Macbeth to draw him to dinner. He notices her and quickly dismisses the murderer. Get the gun. Exit murderer. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The ghost of Banquo enters, his face coated in blood, and sits in Macbeth's place. No one can see him except Macbeth. Least to your highness to grace us with your royal company. 
the table's full. Percy, you ready, buddy? Yes, wait. Didn't Val just say the table's full? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, pointing to the ghost, here is a place reserved, sir. Macbeth? I don't know that the ghost is there. I just point to where the seat Okay, is. that's good, buddy. Macbeth sees the ghost and points to it, horrified. Oh. Yeah, you have done this! What, my good lord? Never shake thy gory locks at me! With worthy friends, my lord is often thus. The fit is momentary. He pulls Macbeth away from them and speaks to him in a whisper. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. The ghost gets up and walks to the back, standing there invisible. Macbeth seems to calm down. If I stand here, I saw him. Fie for shame! The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. Macbeth recovers and turns to address the table. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. Drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, who moves. The lords raise their cups in a toast, and the ghost steps forward, becoming visible again. Avaunt oh, and quit my sight, hence horrible shadow! The lords stand with the intention of helping the king. Lady Macbeth gestures for them to stop. I pray you, speak not. He grows worse and worse at once. Good night. She pushes Macbeth to the edge of the stage. But our health intend his majesty. The lords, confused, file out the other way. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. More shall they speak. Lady Macbeth pushes him off stage. Okay. Uh, do you guys need a stretch break? Good. You want to keep rolling or do we need an intermission? Give me a thumbs up if you feel good. Good? All right. Great. We're going to keep rolling then. All right. Act four, scene one. Um, we have our three witches and Macbeth. We also have our three apparitions. In this scene. Okay, so everybody get ready. All right, act four, scene one a cavern in the middle, a boiling cauldron. Thunder. Enter the three witches. One carries a cauldron and sets it down on center stage. The three gather around it. They throw things into the cauldron as they speak. Round about the cauldron go. In the poisoned entrails throw. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. The lay of a finny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog. Wool of bat and tongue of dog. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of goat and slips of you, silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Tartar's lips. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Enter Macbeth. You black and midnight hags, what is you do? A deed without a name. Answer to me what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. 
say if they'll rather, rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Come, let me see. Come, Come high or low, I see self and office deftly show. Thunder, the apparitions and the ghost enter at back, standing in the dark. The first apparition steps forward, an armed head or soldier. He knows thy thought. All right, we need to check on the, let's see, this should be Andrew, apparition one. All right, I'm unmuting you, Andrew. Ready, set, go. Macbeth, beware Macduff, beware the thane of fight. The apparition steps back into the dark. What then thou art for thy good caution? Thanks. Second apparition steps forward. A bloody mm -hmm. child. Macbeth, laugh to scorn the power of man, for none woman born shall harm Macbeth. Second apparition steps back. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? Third apparition steps forward. A child crowned with a tree in his hand. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunnan Hill shall come against him. Third apparition steps back. That will never be. Who can bid the tree unfix his earth on root? Tell me. Yeah, like, what trees can talk? The issue ne ever reign in this kingdom? Show. The ghost of Banquo steps forward, this time dressed in king's robes, with a crown on his head and a mirror in his hands. Thou art to be the spirit of Banquo, who bears a glass which shows me many more. Now I see tis true. The ghost vanishes. The witches pick up their cauldron and leave the stage while Macbeth is watching after the ghost. He turns around and they are gone. It. Infected be the air whereon they ride. He thinks for a moment about the spirit's prophecies and comes to a decision. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Exit. Okay. Scene two. We will need Lady Macduff, son of Macduff, First and second murderer, and that's it. Everybody ready? Not quite. Give me a moment. Costume, Costume change. change. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Ready. Great. All right. Scene two, Fife, Macduff's castle. Enter Lady Macduff and her son. Macduff has fled to England to join Malcolm. To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles in a place from which he himself does fly? How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. <laughs> then you'll buy me him and then spell again. Thou speak'st with all thy wit, and yet if I, with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. Three murderers run on stage with knives in their hands. Lady Macduff stands and hides her son behind her. It is your husband. Dan, you with me? Unmute, dude. Here, I'm only muting you now. He's Try again, Dan. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shag-haired villain. The son runs at the first murderer and attacks him. <sighs> Young fly treachery. The murderer stabs him and throws him to the ground. 
Oh, he has killed me, mother. Son dies. Lady Macduff runs off screaming away from the <laughs> they follow her off, and the screaming stops abruptly. Whew. <laughs> All right. Scene three. We're going to need Macduff and Malcolm, and also Ross. Okay. So everybody else can turn off for a second. Macduff, Malcolm, Ross. Scene three. England, before the king's palace. Enter Malcolm and Macduff. In all the legions of Howard Bell, can come a devil nor um, in devils to talk with Beth. Oops. Oh, it's you. Oh, Seward. With ten thousand warlike men already was setting forth. Now we'll together. Such welcome, unwelcome things at once. Enter Ross, looking sad. Stand, Scotland, where it did. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know it. The newest grief. Each minute seems a new one. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babe savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven. My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. <laughs> and I must be from thence my wife killed too? Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children, boss. All my pretty ones. What all my pretty chickens in there? Damn up one false week. Dispute is like a man. It I shall do so. But I must also feel as a man. Did heaven look on them, they would not take their part since for me death. They were all struck for thee. Let grief convert to anger. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes. Gentle heavens, bring thou this friend of the end of Scotland within my sword's length. Come, Macbeth is right for shaking. Exit. All right, excellent. We're on to Act Five. We're going to need the doctor, the waiting woman or gentlewoman of Macbeth, of uh, Lady Macbeth, and Lady Macbeth. Give you a second to get set. Okay, Act Five, Scene One, Dunsinane, the ante room in the castle. Enter a doctor and a waiting gentlewoman. When was it she last walked? Since His Majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, <coughs> a fourth paper, write upon it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature. Enter Lady Macbeth, eyes open, but sleepwalking. No, you, here she comes. Lady Macbeth wanders to center stage as the doctor and gentlewoman watch. She stops and stares at her hands. Yet here's a spot. Hawk, she speaks. Lady Macbeth begins to mime the action of scrubbing and washing her hands. Memories come to her of the deeds she has participated in. Out then, spot, out, I say. What need we fear who knows it, when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? The thing of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? 
All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. This disease is beyond my practice. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on, out on one's grave. To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. He runs off. More needs, more needs she the divine than the physician. Exit doctor and gentlewoman the opposite way. Okay, we're going to be act five, scene two. Uh, we need Macbeth <coughs> and Satan, or maybe you say it's Satan. And we're going to also need the doctor and um, I think that's it for this scene. Okay, so Macbeth, the doctor, and Satan. And Macbeth's servant. Yeah, Satan is Macbeth's servant, so oh. that's the description of him. All right, Act Five, Scene Two, Dunsinane, a room in the castle. Enter Macbeth, Lady Macbeth's doctor, and Seton, Macbeth's certain servant carrying armor. Bring me no more reports. Shall Burnham Wood remove I cannot take the fear. There is ten thousand. Yes, no. Soldiers, sir, the English force so please you. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Hang those that talk of fear. Seaton begins to put Macbeth's armor on. Macbeth addresses the doctor. Where is your patient, doctor? She is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Therein, the patient must minister to herself. Beth waves his hand, dismissing the doctor in disgust. Go psychic to the dogs, then. I'll none of it. The doctor bows and leaves. Get in vain till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Satan or Seton has finished adjusting the armor. Macbeth marches out and Seton follows. All right, scene three. Um, we're going to need Malcolm, Seward, and young Seward, Macduff, Angus, Lennox, Ross. Um, but you don't all speak, so that you're, I guess you're all just there. All right, scene also, three. It says all dress for battle and arms. That's so right, everybody get your sword. swords out. Get your swords out. Scene. All right, scene three, country near Burnham Wood. Enter Malcolm, Seward, young Seward, Macduff, Angus, Lennox, Ross, all dressed for battle and armed. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Josh. I'm unmuting you, Josh. Here we go. One, two, three. Unmute's not working. Let every soldier hew him down and bow uh, and burn before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host. We learn no other but confident triumph keeps skill and destiny. Let our just censors attend the true servants and put on our industrious forgership. He leads him off the opposite way. All right, do you guys understand the plan there? These guys are about to storm Dunsinane, which is Macbeth's stronghold. And Malcolm has suggested that they all chop down a branch and carry it in front of them. Remember the apparition that was the third one, I think. Right. He says, don't be afraid until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. 
So Malcolm is saying, cut a branch off of Burnham Wood and carry it in front of yourself to shield our numbers. So kind of like a camouflage move. So um, this is how Burnham Wood is going to come to Dunsinane. All right, scene four, Dunsinane. We're gonna have Macbeth and Seaton and also a messenger. Then we're gonna have young Seward and then Macduff. That's my kid, that's my kid. And this is also gonna have Malcolm and Ross. Okay, this is our final scene. Everybody ready? Get your swords, everybody. All right, scene four, Dunsinane within the castle. Enter Macbeth and Seaton. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here, let them lie till famine and the all eat them up. Lady Macbeth screams off stage. What does that noise? Seton runs off stage to see. I've almost forgotten the piece of fear. Re-enter Seton looking Isn't horrified. It? All right, this is Amanda. Um, the queen, my lord, is dead. Macbeth stands shocked for a moment, then laments the futility of life. I have died hereafter. There wouldn't have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day, the last syllable of recorded time. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and sucks his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Here's the tale told by an idiot with a sounded fury, signifying nothing. Enter messenger. Gracious, my lord, as I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and we thought the wood began to move. Fire and slave, if thou speak'st false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive. Ring the alarm bell. Seaton and the messenger run off stage to obey. The bell rings. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one I am to fear, or none. Enter young Seward, sword out, ready to fight. What, what is thy name? My name's Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful than mine ear. Young Seward charges him. They fight, and young Seward is slain easily. Macbeth laughs over his corpse. <laughs> Thou wast born a woman. <laughs> Enter Macduff, sword out, furious. Torn, hellhound! My turn. Turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. My soul is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my knives. Macduff attacks. They fight. Macbeth bends off Macduff and pushes him back. Thou lovest this labor. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of women born. Oh, ho, ho. despair thy charm, for Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely writ. Pause as this sinks in. What he means, guys, is that his, he was born from a C-section, not uh, the traditional way. So he was, as a baby, he was torn out of his mom's womb early. So uh, that's... I guess what they would call not actually being born, but he was sort of born a different way. Causes this thing in. Macbeth, Macbeth grows horrified. Accursed be that tongue that tells me so. I'll not fight with thee. Damn you, you coward. 
I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. Lay on, McDuff, and damned be them that first cries. Hold enough! They fight. The ching, battle takes ching, them off stage. Ching, 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 ching. From the opposite side comes Malcolm, Seward, Lennox, Angus, and Ross. Dude, that's both my people. Who's Malcolm? Josh, you're on, bud. The last page. Macduff is missing, and you're a noble son. Ross sees young Seward's body and runs to it. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt, but like a man, he died. Had he his hurts before? Man, that's life. Boy, on the front. Seward kneels by the body of his dead son and weeps. Why then God's soldier be he? Re-enter Macduff, carrying Macbeth's head. Oh. Wait, who's Macduff? Yeah. Hold on, I'm turning Peter's sign back head. on. Get it? I use my head. <laughs> All right, hit it, Macduff. I don't have a head. No, you have a you have a part, no, Peter. You have two heads. You Hail got King. Hail King, for so thou art. Behold, while well stands the usurper's cursed head. Hail, King of Scotland. Oh, Everybody. that's me. Oh, that's me. Hail. And Linux, so, um, hail. Uh, hail. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be yours. The first ever in Scotland. In such an honor named. Call home our exiled friends aboard that fled and snarls of the dead brother butcher, butcher and friend like queen. This what this and what needful else that called upon us by the great grace of grace we will perform in measure time increase. Exit. Woo! Yay! Yay! Tell me what happened there at the end. Who understood Act Five? I killed Macbeth. Yeah. 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 How did Peter you kill him? I chopped off his with head. Sword. Yeah. With a sword. Of a uh, uh, woman. She wasn't. He wasn't born a woman. Right. Exactly. Turns out Macduff was born by C-section, which would have been very unusual back then. So technically, not born of woman. Uh, the witches have misled Macbeth into thinking he's invincible. Same thing with the forest. I'm invincible. Okay. Well, guys, I am super proud of you. Let's go go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, name your parts, and um, I want everybody to uh, say your favorite line or whatever you want to say, so that the camera will go to you. Okay. All right, first, let's take a bow. Percy, who played Linux and Old Seward. Okay. Percy, say something. Um, wait, yeah. I, I got my favorite line. I know this one is somewhere. Okay, everybody find your favorite line. Yeah. He had he his hurts before. That's a lot of H's. That is a lot of H's. Okay, good. 
All right, next, let's say thank you to Israel, who was Ross, the third murderer and the third apparition. Herc, I hear horses. Okay, good job, Israel. All right, next, let's say thank you to Dan, who was Angus, the porter and the second murderer. No drinking, sleep, and urine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's say thank you to Josh, who was Malcolm, the first murderer, the servant, Max Three, and young Seward. I don't have any favorite lines. You don't have any favorite lines? That's a nice favorite line. <laughs> My favorite line is Mango. <laughs> All right, let's say thank you to Andrew, who played Duncan, Cleance, the Doctor, and Apparition One. It's not my favorite line. It's the best line. The best line is, ah! Obviously. Saving. All right. Let's say thank you to Rowan, who was Banquo, the ghost of Banquo, and the sergeant. You get to be the ghost and the person. That's always nice. I think my favorite line was, Oh, treachery! Fly, good flames! Fly! <laughs> good feeling. I love it. All right, and then I died. I thought it was more like, Oh, treachery. Right. All right, let's say thank you to Peter Macduff, yeah. Apparition Oi. 2 and the son of Macduff. Oh, it's my pleasure for playing. And, yeah, I don't really have a favorite line. There's a lot of lines that I have. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like my sword and my knives and my dagger. So, dude, that's a lot of different melee weapons. <laughs> yeah. It's well right. Armed. All right. Let's say thank you to um, Valor, who was Macbeth. Yay! Woo! Hey guys, Thank you. 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 Thank Nose of Turk and Tartar. Bring <laughs> <laughs> a pilot's thumb no too? Nose, <laughs> no, <laughs> nose painting. <laughs> nose painting. <laughs> All right. Nose. Let's give it up for Amanda, the second witch, Seton and Donald Bain. Yay. Yay. Favorite line? Fair is foul and foul is fair. Hubble through the fog and filthy air. Yes. That's it. Very good. <laughs> All right. Elizabeth, the first witch, the waiting woman, and Lady Macbeth. I would say it's divided between double, double toil and trouble, and I can buy me 20 at any market. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And finally, Maria. Lady Macbeth. Yeah. Yeah. But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. All right, guys. This was so much fun. Thank you for your effort and your participation and zeal. And uh, why can't bravo. we thank, why can't we thank, thank the stage manager? Manager. 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 manager? Why can't we thank the stage manager? Thank you, stage manager. Thank you, thank you. 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 That one was the shortest one, wasn't it? I want to do another one. <laughs> I want more lines, because I kind of didn't have anything at the end. <laughs> that, if you give me all the funny parts, then I do want it. Yeah. <laughs> we get to do this in person. Part through the middle that I didn't have any. Yeah, time. wait till we can do it in person. person. Yeah, I feel right. like you okay. need that as an excuse to say urine. <laughs> <laughs> you. Awesome. All right, guys, enjoy your night. Thanks, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.